Kingdom Builders Change the World, Chapter 17, The Church and the Kingdom of God. There's been a great discussion over many hundreds of years about whether or not the kingdom and the church are the same or different. And it's important to recognize whether they are identical or whether they're different. Is one inferior or one superior? Or are they frankly distinct from one another? Now, in this particular chapter, we'll learn that Jesus only mentioned twice the word church, or in the Greek, it's called ekklesia. He mentions in Matthew 16, 18, after Peter said, you are the Messiah and so forth. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church in the gates of Hades, shall not overpower it. In other words, Jesus said, he will build his church, and it will be so powerful, it will overcome the powers of darkness and literally push back the gates of hell. The second mention is Matthew 18, 17. Uh, there Jesus is teaching about when someone sins, you go and confront them. They don't repent. Then you take someone with you. Uh, a couple of people, if they still don't repent, then take it before the church. And this is the these are the only two places in the gospel where Jesus actually mentions it. And it's interesting in Matthew 16 verse 19, he says I will give you the keys of the kingdom. He's talking to all the believers that they will be given the keys in order to destroy the gates of heaven and the keys to unlock the kingdom of God here upon the earth. Now, it's a reality that the kingdom of God has always existed. It existed in heaven before creation because the kingdom has always been with God and it will exist for all eternity because God is his kingdom and he will always keep it in existence. Now, the visible church is quite different from the invisible kingdom. And the visible church is a necessary outworking of the kingdom's presence here upon the earth. And the church is simply just one organ of the kingdom, how it actually functions. The church is simply an extension of the kingdom of God on earth to function within this fallen world. The church gathers believers together to have a common bond in the faith and to be able to function together in unity to advance the kingdom of God. And also the church should be expressing the principles of the kingdom of God wherever it's located. When churches gather, they should be expressing the keys of the kingdom of life, of peace, of joy, of forgiveness, of healing, of hope, of restoration, of transformation, and so many other aspects of the kingdom. So the church is the visible expression of the kingdom of God in the fallen world. Now, the kingdom is much wider than the church. The kingdom is eternal. The church is temporary. It will end when Jesus comes again. And the church simply does not contain the entire complexity of the kingdom. The church is just a small fragment of the kingdom and what God is doing in the earth today. Now, it's interesting the kingdom extends beyond the visible society of believers. When Jesus first came and you said the church is amongst you, or excuse me, the kingdom is amongst you, or, or kingdom is in you, even though everyone around them were lost, he was telling them that the kingdom was present, powerful, and that it was operating before the church even came into existence. And uh, different people have talked about the differences of the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God affects every realm of human existence, from the natural to the spiritual to all institutions in human society. And the kingdom is not confined primarily to the inward life, but it is the principle of working within us to be expressed outwardly to manifest the principles of the kingdom. The primary task of the church is to proclaim and live the kingdom. And so we can conclude in this chapter that the church is not the kingdom, but the kingdom, which is much larger than the church, extends far beyond this world and all human institutions. <music>